11 different studies, over 27,000 people. And it's determined that having high levels of this ends up contributing to an 80% higher risk of all-cause mortality than if you had lower levels of it. Now, something that causes an 80% increased risk of dying, you would think that would have to be something horrible, like, I don't know, smoking or maybe drinking or a combination of that, being sedentary. But no, we're actually talking about something interesting. And I'm gonna tell you what it is. This isn't like some clickbaity nonsense. But I do want you to hear me out because I have ways that you can lower it and some interesting things that also come along with that. I'm talking about homocysteine. Now, homocysteine is a compound in the body that is in some ways a byproduct of just life. Like we're gonna have homocysteine. But ideally we want the body to be able to break down homocysteine into an amino acid that's called methionine, in which case the body can break it down. People that are metabolically unhealthy have high levels of homocysteine and this ultimately degrades the vessels, affects the circulatory system, and more than likely leads to cardiovascular disease. Now what's really wild is looking at this same study, for every five micromole per liter increase in homocysteine, there is a 33% increase risk of all-cause mortality. And that is looking at large data. Now, what can we do to potentially reduce this? Well, one of the most compelling compounds that is out there is something that is called trimethylglycine, also known as TMG, also known as betaine. Now, the cool thing is, is you can get this from food. We'll talk about the foods that you can get it from, but you can also get it in supplement form. And it's also created in the body. Now, a healthy metabolism does produce a fair bit of TMG. What TMG is, is a methylated amino known as glycine. So you've probably heard of glycine before, namely when we talk about collagen, right? Collagen has a lot of glycine in it. So all this is, is a methylated form. Because it is methylated, and this is gonna sound complex, the extra methyl groups, which in this case is one carbon and three hydrogen atoms, these methyl groups can become what are called donors. And these donors can actually trigger, turn on switches that help our body remain youthful. It could also go haywire if it goes too far. But these quote unquote youthful switches can help clear out bad things in the body. But most, most importantly, in this particular case, it helps to overall break down homocysteine into a very, very excretable thing, methionine. Now methionine is an amino acid that you're gonna find in meat, right? You're gonna, you eat meat, you get methionine. There's some literature out there that suggests that high levels of methionine contribute to like poor longevity and whatnot, but they're really not conclusive and they're predominantly rodent model stuff. So when you look at how TMG works with this, it's very, very fascinating. Now, I also wanna talk about how TMG can have a powerful impact on fat loss and muscle building as sort of an added benefit. But let's talk about where you can get it first. One of the best sources is going to be beets. And it's easy to remember because you can think beets have betaine. Okay, betaine, also known as TMG, also known as trimethylglycine, same thing. Shrimp also has high levels of betaine. Spinach has high levels of betaine. And drum roll please, the highest concentration of betaine is gonna come from wheat bran, which is not something that everyone can tolerate. If you have gluten issues, you probably don't wanna touch wheat bran. Personally, when I eat gluten, I gain like five pounds in water weight. I feel inflamed. I'm not even celiac, so I can't tell you why. I could make up some reasons, but then the trolls would come after me. Bottom line, I avoid gluten, and a lot of people in my circle do as well. So wheat brands just kind of off limits. So that leads me to supplementation. How much should you take if lowering homocysteine is your goal? Well, good news. They've done a lot of research on this. The average person consumes about a half a gram of betaine per day through their diet, up to about two grams for people to eat a really good diet. We used to think you needed about six grams to have any notable impact on lowering homocysteine. But now literature is suggesting when they did a study looking at 1.5 grams, three grams, or six grams, all of them reduced homocysteine. However, the 1.5 gram group lowered at 12%, 
the three gram group lowered it 15% and the six gram group lowered it 20%. Now they didn't test above that, but it's pretty safe to take and you could go above that. So interesting there, we actually see that the more you take, the more you lower it. So if you go and you get some blood work done and your homocysteine levels are high, you may want to take a higher amount of overall TMG, whether it's supplement or eating those kinds of foods. I put a link down below for 30% off through Thrive Market, simply because A, I use them all the time, it's a good recommendation, they're a sponsor on this channel, but also they have betaine supplements there. So you can go to Thrive Market, you can search in their supplement section for betaine, they have freeze dried beets, they have other beet snacks, they also have sustainable meat and seafood options, so you can get shrimp, they also have wheat bran, so you can get all the things that are rich in betaine, but you can get them at 30% off because you're using that special link down below. Plus you can do the rest of your grocery shopping too. So you can do all your grocery shopping, load up your grocery cart, get 30% off and get a free $60 gift when you use that link down below. So when it comes down to getting specific things, Thrive Market really makes a lot of sense because you can also tag it along with your regular grocery as well. And then it gets delivered to your doorstep. So super easy peasy lemon squeezy. So that link, again, exclusive discount at 30% off for your whole grocery cart in that link down below. I wanna pivot for just a second. I've talked about this in another video, but I'm gonna to touch on it just in case you haven't heard that because it's super interesting. TMG also has a weirdly powerful impact on muscle building and fat loss. So there's a study published in Nutrients that took a look at six studies, systematic review meta-analysis that found that TMG supplementation led to decreases in fat mass, decreases in body fat percentage, while not decreasing body weight, meaning that muscle was preserved or gained while fat mass and body fat percentage went down. There was follow-up studies done in the journal Nutrients that demonstrated that it actually blocked the production of white fat. That's jiggly, subcutaneous, nasty fat. It blocked the production of it in mice, which we can translate over to these larger systematic reviews and at least draw some inference and speculate there. Additionally, tremendous improvements in insulin resistance in obese and non-obese which means that there's something happening there that we don't really fully know. But knowing that it increases methylation, it's probably increasing just overall energy availability. This is very, very powerful news. And it tells us that, okay, maybe we're missing out on something here because a healthy person produces TMG in decent amounts. An unhealthy person does not, hence why homocysteine goes up so much. What else is an unhealthy person typically? Usually, under-muscled, usually over-fat, and, well, usually high levels of homocysteine like we talked about, and probably low energy, and probably low methyl pool as well. So if I were in a situation where I was in poor metabolic health, had high levels of homocysteine, and I had a lot of extra fat on me, what I would probably do is start eating some beets, start eating some shrimp, I would probably supplement between four and six grams of betaine TMG per day, and I would monitor my blood work closely, and I would also start resistance training since the evidence on muscle seems to show that TMG improves muscle mass and fat loss, but only when combined with resistance training at least two to three times per week. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.